The modern shooter is a staple of today's video game industry. Why has it become so popular and what is it about World War II that has so many developers making games about it? Well, today's World War II shooters follow a relatively familiar formula for their gameplay. Over the top action, a linear format, and lots and lots of goddamn shooting. But where did this formula come from? And why do games look like this? The answer lies in a few key considerations. Firstly, we need to look at the shooter genre itself. The shooter game type as we know it today is simply a type of game in which a player takes control of a character and uses them to shoot at a target. The idea is similar in ways to the shooting galleries popular at the turn of the century. By putting the target in a virtual world, the user can shoot at more than just paper or steel. The user can shoot at an actual enemy and feel as if, it, feel as if he or she is on the battlefield. Next, we need to consider why World War II is used so much in shooters. By using World War II, developers avoid a major issue in morality. Nazis are universal evil. By using them as the bad guys in shooters, developers can avoid the moral gray zone associated with ending a life. With other series such as GTA or Grand Theft Auto or Saints Row, a morale dilemma arises. In these games, players can shoot innocent people with the characters they control. I've seen you know, um, kids playing games. They take a particular delight in killing Japanese, and as opposed to German soldiers, you know. Um, because now that we know why World War II was used, we can look into how the genre evolved. To do this, we need to look into the mind of one person, Steven Spielberg. In 1997, with the release of Saving Private Ryan just around the corner, directed, director Steven Spielberg had a radical new idea. He thought of using video games to add a new educational experience to those studying World War II. Spielberg added real combat footage and narrations of games a loading screen and incorporated period correct weapons and weapons manipulation into the playable game. He also changed the dynamic of traditional games by creating a linear system of playthrough instead of a traditional open world. Spielberg would not have long to celebrate the success of his franchise though, as in 2003 would bring a new contender into the world of shooters. Following a series of creative disputes, 22 members of Spielberg's team left the project and formed their own companies. These developers created the series COD, Call of Duty, or short form COD, and introduced many designs changes to their new game. These changes became staples of the shooter genre as a whole. Features included a kill cam to replay the last few seconds before you died, aim your Aim Down Sight, or ADS, module to show players what aiming down a gun was like and made shooting more accurate. Both of these were assets in the growing multiplayer market. To keep a competitive edge on the Medal of Honor, the Call of Duty franchise would eventually borrow an idea from Spielberg in creating a game based around a movie. For Call of Duty, several blockbusters were incorporated into the games. The Call of Duty franchise, for example, would begin recycling scenes from Save It Private Ryan. Now that we understand what Medal of Honor and Call of Duty are as a part of the shooter genre, we can finally begin to answer another question. Why the hell is World War II the backdrop to sell all these games? The answer is simple. By using World War II, you have a well-defined boundary of a baseline knowledge to work with and experts to consult. World War II even has a dedicated base of people interested in learning about it and keeping the gameplay fresh is easy to the complexity of the war as a whole. By using a global conflict, the options of locations and environments are expansive. You can have jungle settings, winter si settings, cities, or even deserts. A developer can even use an array of weapons and vehicles as many were used during the conflict. World War II also gives developers a wide range of uniforms and style. Example, each country has its own uniform and weapons they used. This creates a multitude of characters and scenarios gamers can play with. These scenarios can be blended with other gameplay elements such as adding planes or bombings to create a different experience with each game. Now, the best part of using World War II is the lack of debate over right and wrong. The modern conflicts such as Vietnam War or the invasion of, of Iraq are at the center of debate over which side was in the right with moral or ethical implications of each war. The major, the major census for World War II is that the Allies were the good guys, the Axis were not. This makes 
game development easier, and since there is a plenty of source material, creating immersive experience is easy. Without the mind of Steven Spielberg, the World War II shooter genre as it would not exist the way it does today. Thanks to innovations of Spielberg and the team that worked on Call of Duty, modern shooters has evolved into the genre it is. They are historically accurate, to a degree, linear in nature, to a degree. Players can aim their gun, and as they play, they learn about the world's most famous conflicts, to a degree. Anyways, thanks to the effort put into these two series, the world of gaming is what it is today. It's the same one, remember we revamped it. Now that we know why World War II was used, we can look into how the genre evolved. To do this, we need to look into the mind of one person, Steven Spielberg. In 1997, with the release of Saving Private Ryan just around the corner, directed, director Steven Spielberg had a radical new idea. He thought of using video games to add a new educational experience to those studying World War II. Spielberg added real combat footage and narrations of games to loading screen and incorporated period correct weapons and weapons manipulation into the playable game. He also changed the dynamic of traditional games by creating a linear system of playthrough instead of a traditional open world. Spielberg would not have long to celebrate the success of this franchise though, as in 2003 he would bring a new contender into the world of shooters. Following a series of creative disputes, 22 members of Spielberg's team left the project and formed their own companies. These developers created the series COD, Call of Duty, or short form COD, and introduced many designs changes to their new game. These changes became staples of the shooter genre as a whole. Features included a kill cam to replay the last few seconds before you died. That's gruesome. Aim, your, aim down sight, or ADS, module to show players what aiming down a gun was like and made shooting more accurate. Both of these were assets in the growing multiplayer market. Now we understand what Medal of Honor and Call of Duty are as a part of the shooter genre, we can finally begin to answer another question. Why the hell is World War II the backdrop to sell all these games? The answer is simple. By using World War II, you have a well-defined boundary with a baseline knowledge to work with and experts to consult. World War II even has a dedicated base of people interested in learning and about it and keeping the gameplay fresh is easy due to the complexity of the war as a whole. By using a global conflict, the options of location and environments are expansive. You can have jungle settings, winter settings, cities, or deserts. Developers can even use an array of weapons and vehicles as many were used during the conflict. This creates a multitude of characters and scenarios gamers can play with. These scenarios can be blended with create a different experience with each game. Now, the best part of using World War II is the lack of debate over right and wrong. Well, kind of. The modern conflicts such as Vietnam War, which was right, screw the Viet Cong, or the invasion of, of Iraq, which was right, they had WMDs, come on people, are at the center of debate over which side was in the right with moral or ethical implications of each war. The major, the major census for World War II is that the Allies were the good guys, the Axis were not. Well, that's also debatable if you're in China or Japan. The this makes game development easier and since there is a plenty of source material, creating immersive experience is easy.
<clears throat> without the I think they play an enormous role, in, in many ways more important than the classroom. I think of the role of museums, for example. You know, I, whenever I walk through a museum and see the kids with the eyes really lit, you know, watching, uh, you know, films, uh, going into exhibits and things like that, coming out of movies, discussing things, you know, when they're coming out, did that really happen? Uh, uh, was it that bad on the beaches, you know, in Normandy, and I uh, never quite realized the violence was so untrammeled and things like that. I, I think it has an enormous impact. Even video games, for example, um, at least perform the function of uh, telling people where Iwo Jima is and Okinawa and the Pacific and things like that. Give you a sense of geography, topography of World War II and things like that. Uh, kids know the name of Nazi units, American units and things like that. So, yeah, it, it ignites interest in, um, in World War II. I mean, there was an onrush of... Um, uh, clubs formed all over the country when Band of Brothers came out. And I remember visiting um, in uh, Normandy when a lot of the uh, veterans were still alive uh, for Band of Brothers, including Winters and people like that. And they were like rock stars. And um, we were in St. Mary Glace, one of the first towns that was liberated in Normandy. And uh, everybody wanted to see, you know, the, the Screaming Eagles, you know, and talk to them. And, uh, these are kids 13 to 17 years old. So it's uh, it was a it was a phenomenon, yeah, yeah. More so than Saving Private Ryan, I think Band of Brothers was the one that really ignited that kind of interest, you know, and sustained interest in this. And I think there were something like 300 clubs formed across the U.S. 
you know, in Canada as well, you know. Well, Dale, you know, um, was instrumental in getting young actors uh, acclimated to the idea of being, you know, soldiers of the Pacific. He performed the same function for us in Saving Brother Ryan. Uh, he ran a, um, a camp, a boot camp for the actors. You know, they went out in the Irish countryside. They lived in, uh, in huts and tents and drenching rain. And he marched them around and got most of them to want to quit <laughs> after a while. Somebody walked up to Spielberg during the movie and said, uh, my agent said I shouldn't wear a helmet because it messes my hair up. Well, he gave him his walking orders after that. So getting things right, I mean, fidelity is... Uh, it, 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 it's bred in the bones of Steven Spielberg. I mean, he, it's the one thing he demands, and it really. And uh, in the project I'm working with him on, um, there was a suggestion one time that we use, um, as an actor, uh, someone who was a composite character, you know, um, not an actual character from the, from the war. And he was insistent that there be no composite characters, that we find someone uh, who in this case, a combat surgeon who flew with the, with the guys to try to discern whether they were breaking down. And so we found somebody and we create, you know, you've got an actor to play his part. So, um, you know, and, and Spielberg always says, I mean, with a war as rich with explosive, exciting material as that, why would you ever have to make anything up? I mean, never has a director had more uh, experiential material to draw upon than, than, than World War II, you know, love, war, everything, you know, and uh, the world's on point. So uh, it's kind of inexplicable, it was inexplicable to him that you'd want to change the story in any way, because the story has an inherent drama to it already. I see. Maybe uh, ask one more question, because this actually came up in the panel the other night, which mm -hmm. interested me, which is uh, Michael's uh, p uh, positing that uh, World War II, for the shooter game genre in particular, is perfect because you don't have to feel any moral compunction about shooting someone <laughs> because the bad guys are really bad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, I don't know much about games, but um, I think 